The Lord is coming. And that great getting up morning, there will be a mighty trumpet. The question is, is your name written down on the road? The Lord is coming. And oh boy, the Holy Spirit has led us into some passages that speak of the truth of prophecy. And we've been able to connect that with modern times. Last week we looked at Daniel and the figure that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Um, if you, want, you weren't here, you want to get those notes, you'll want to get the CD, study it um, prayerfully. It will, it will bless your spirit. And so we want to travel on today and, and look at some things. Now, in this word, I pray that your mind is open not only to the events that I will share with you, but that you will connect them with your life. Let me ask you a question, and you can answer this out loud. I, I don't mind at all. Every day we see the U.S. If you watch CNN, you go any part of the world, you will see the U.S. on the international stage. You will see also Israel featured on the international stage. Can you tell me what other nations you will see and hear of in the international news on a day-to-day -day basis? And I need you, Anita, to please just, just record Describe for me um, the names that are called out, and we'll see if we come back to them. Syria, Korea, China, Russia, Japan, Turkey, Libya, Pakistan. Okay. You got all of that? <laughs> Libya, Pakistan, Japan, Russia, Syria, Iran, Jordan, okay, Turkey, okay. Now, you got those now? All right. <clears throat> Of those names, how many are mentioned in the Bible? And what role will they play in the end times? That's what we want to focus on today. You just spouted out these nations. And we want to see what role they're going to play in the future. Now, yesterday, as I was preaching and teaching, Valerie, towards the end of the messages, where is America in this? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm glad you asked that question, and I'll get to that one next week. It's right on time. Whoa. I have to take a deep breath. My heart is racing as I think about the relevancy of the scripture and where we are in the timeline of God. And things are moving just as the word of God stated. I want to thank God for two things. First of all, for salvation. And then I want to thank him, well, for three things. Second thing, 
is I want to thank him for his word. Amen. And then for a church that loves the word of God and loves to be taught the word of God. Would you join me in thanking God right now for those three things? Amen. Amen. Twenty-five hundred years ago, the prophet Ezekiel heard God speaking, and he had to give a message to the children of Israel. He had to speak these words from Ezekiel 38. Are you ready? Let's go there. Now the word of the Lord came to me, that's Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog the prince of Rosh, (laughs) Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of what? Rosh, son of man. Set your face against Gog. Now, who in the world is Gog? Gog would be a leader, the mastermind, who would mobilize military forces that would dare arise to attack Israel. Who is Gog? He's a leader. He is also known as the king of the sons of pride. The king of the sons of pride. Who is Gog? He is the prince of Rosh, John F. Wolverd, in his book, The Nations in Prophecy, tells us in a study how ancient words became a part of our modern language, and he says, that while the consonants of a word could remain the same, you could change the vowel. And so if we change the O in Rosh to you, what we have is the root of our former or our present word, Russia. Let's go to Ezekiel 38, verse 6. For those of you that need a little more evidence that this is Russia, if you go to any map and you start with Israel and you move north, you're going to run into Russia. This says, these troops will come from the far what? North. And all its troops, <clears throat> and there will be many people with them. Let's go also to same, <clears throat> same chapter, verse 15. There it again. 
speaking of God, Gog, you will come from your place out of where? Far north. Chapter 39, there's a verse there that speaks again that this group will come from the far north. Now let's go back to 38 and 2. Son of man, set your face against who? Who? Gog. The prince of what? Rosh. The prince of Rosh. And God says, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Let's go to the next verse. <clears throat> and say, thus saith the Lord, behold, I am what? I'm against you, O God, the prince of what? Those are strong words for God to say, I'm against you. I wouldn't want God to say, and he specifically used his name, I'm against you, Freddie Pyphus. That's major trouble. Why is God against Gog is the question that we have to answer this morning. Russia, unlike parts of Africa that's polytheistic, that worships many God, Russia believes there is no God. Russia is atheistic. Joseph Stalin once said, we have removed the czars and now we will dethrone the Lord of heaven. I'll let you calm down for a moment. Yes. <laughs> when the Russians sent a rocket past the moon called the Sputnik, there was an announcement, a chilling announcement that came across the radio. Our rocket has bypassed the moon. We're near the sun. We have not discovered God. We have not discovered God, and we have turned out all the lights in heaven that no man will be able to put on again. We will break the yoke of the gospel, the opiate of the masses. Let us go forth. And Jesus Christ will be relegated to mythology. Are y'all still here? The fool says in his heart, there is no God. And God says, for this, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, I am against you. Not only for your statements towards the I am God, not only because you shake your fist of the Alpha to the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, but also because you would dare to rise up and bring other nations to come against Jerusalem. Are y'all here? Let's go back to verse 2. Son of man, set your face against now. Let's get further into this. Gog of the land of Magog. 
Everybody say Magog. Magog. Say it again. Magog. And one more time. Magog. Who is Magog? Well, first of all, let me go back to Gog, as though I've not said enough about him. He has a monstrous-like mindset. Listen to what God says. Go back to that third verse. And go to the fourth verse. This is what God says. God, I'm going to turn you around and put... What's he going to do? I'm going to turn you... I'm going to turn you around... Like a fish, I'm going to turn you around, put hooks in, and I'm going to lead, watch that, I'm going to lead you out. You think you're doing something. I'm going to show you. When I go fishing, there's a certain type of bait that I will use for bluegill certain type of bait that I will use for catfish. You have to know what they like. And so God, when he's fishing out for demonic forces, he knows what they like. God likes the bait of wealth and power. And so God reels him in and somebody said he's like a fish like a fish like something in the water something that fights fears how about a alligator or a crocodile Job 41 speaks of Leviathan a monstrous alligator type of creature in the waters. <laughs> Let's go there. Job 41. Come on, Pyphus. Is this good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can he be brought out, I believe it says in the King James Version, with a thorn? What did they place on Jesus' head? A thorn. And you know what, sis? Satan thought he was doing something. He thought he had a plan. He thought he had devised a plan to destroy Jesus. But God set this up before the foundations of the world. He just baited Satan in because he knows what he likes. And so as Jesus was hung up for my redemption... I was redeemed and I was set free. God was doing something else to Satan by the thorn. And so God says, let's go back to Ezekiel 38 and 4. Is that where we were? He said, I'm going to hook you. Boy, I'm going to turn you around. Yeah, I'm going to put hooks in your jaw. I'm going to lead you out. With all your army, horses and horsemen, all clothed, looking good, handling their swords. Mm. Let's go back to second verse. Now we will begin to parse it out. The land of what? Talk to me. The land of what? Magog. Magog. Who's Magog? Magog is the second son of Japheth. 
Japheth is the son of Noah. Magog, then, is the grandson of Noah. And a land was named after him. The land is called now the land of the stands. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and all of those stands have something in common, Islam. Some six million Muslims live in that territory. Son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of (laughs) Migog, the prince of what? Rosh. Come on, talk to me. The prince of what? (sighs) Go back. Go back. And Meshach. And Tabul, Meshach, Tabul, Meshach, the fifth son of Japheth, Tabul, the sixth son of Japheth, again, the grandchildren (laughs) of Noah. Oh, Lord. I'll pray for my grandchildren right now. (laughs) Meshach and Meshek today is Moscow. (laughs) So how many have we crossed off on our list so far? And Tabul is modern day Turkey. Prophesy against him. Give me verse 3. Y'all all all right? I'm against you again, oh God, the prince of Rosh, the prince of Russia, (laughs) the prince of, let's just do it, Moscow and Turkey. Let's keep rolling. We've already read that. Let's go to verse 5. Oh, Boy, it's amazing to see your eyes light up. This is just the beginning, though. In 1935, Persia changed its name to Iran. 1979, it changed it once again. All right, modified it to the Islamic Republic of Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran. On, hmm? Islamic Republic of Iran. Persia. Everybody get it? Persia in 1935 changed the name to what? Changed it to what? And when you, right, and then it's 1979, modified it again to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Yes. Now, you turn on the news today, sometime today, you're going to hear, it's a guarantee, you're going to hear this alliance between Russia and Iran. Israeli intelligence have photographs that scientists from Russia are helping Iran in devising nuclear arsenal for the purpose of annihilating Israel. That's going on today. 
So we have Iran, Ethiopia, where's that? North Africa. The modern name for Ethiopia, and I think somebody called it out, was Sudan. You know Libya, don't you? You heard so much of Libya during that election process? Yeah. <sighs> There's civil unrest there in Libya. Uh, fierce Islamic fighters that are rising up. Something is happening in Libya. All of them <laughs> with shield and helmet. <laughs> Next verse. Gomer. Gomer who? Not Gomer Powell. <laughs> no. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Gomer and all its troops. No, not Gomer Pal. How about Germany? Judith, make me just want to sit down. Whoo! Germany, Germany again? <sighs> Germany. The house of Tagarma. Again, that's related to Turkey. Turkey. Okay, here it is. From the far north, all of its troops, as countless as the sands of the seas, are going to come together for the purpose of wiping out Israel. What? Why are they coming together? Why are they coming together? Israel. Jerusalem. Let's, let's look at the map here. Israel is said to be about the size of New Jersey. And Grady asked, why does it take so many <laughs> to wipe out this little place? I wish, I wish you could see the size of Russia compared to little Israel. And then you have all of those other nations there it is. Why are they doing this? Where is Jerusalem? Glad you asked that question. Ezekiel 5 and 5. Ezekiel 5 and 5. Is this too much for y'all? Are you keeping up? Okay. Ezekiel 5 and 5. <laughs> Thus said the Lord God, this is what? This is what? Talk to me. Say it loud. This is what? And I have set her in the what? What did you say, girl? Right in the mist. Right in the mist, in the middle. In the mist in Hebrew means navel. In the middle. God has set Jerusalem in right in in the middle, on display for a purpose. 
He has made Jerusalem his dwelling place. Do you know about Jerusalem? Can we just pause for a moment to talk about Jerusalem? That's where Abram took Isaac to be sacrificed. And just as he was sacrificed, there was a, he looked around and there was a lamb. And what did he say? God will provide. Jehovah Jireh. Does anybody know that God will provide? Come on, do you really know? Because that's going to be a key portion to God will provide. David and his mighty men seized Jerusalem from the Jebusites and set it up as a capital. God made it his home. Yeah, the the very centerpiece. David was so passionate about that thing. He said, if I forget Jerusalem, my life is meaningless. Jerusalem is where Isaiah and Jeremiah wrote the principles of righteousness. Jerusalem is where baby Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day. Jerusalem. Yeah. Where young Jesus went through the bar mitzvah service, the rites of passage on his 13th birthday and on his 33rd year in Jerusalem he would partake of the Passover the last supper with the disciples it was in Jerusalem where they arrested him and he received 39 lashes put a crown of thorns on his head a cross on his back and there was Roman spittle in his face It was outside of Jerusalem where they hung my Savior up between two thieves. Jerusalem where he was crucified. And then he rose up out of a borrowed tomb in Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem. That's where he met the disciples before his ascension. That's where the church got started. In Jerusalem. And Claude, the prophet Zechariah says that it's in Jerusalem where the Antichrist is going to come against Israel, but it's also in Jerusalem that the lion from the tribe of Judah is going to be victorious over the enemy. And it's in Jerusalem, daughter, that he's going to set up his kingdom. It's there in Jerusalem where every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And right now, in the prophetic time of God, God is just baiting Satan to come. You just come on, just keep coming. Just just keep coming. Just just keep coming into Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, it's going to take place. His word doesn't return void. Can I get a witness here? And can we just pause and take a praise break right here and thank God for the King of Kings, 
the Lamb of God, the Rose of Sharon, and thank him because one of these days we're going to come together in the new Jerusalem. So why do they come against Jerusalem? Well, to summarize, to steal, kill, and destroy. You'll see that in that chapter. And right now, and I'll tell you about this in, in the weeks to come, there's a crisis of oil. Russia desires to be a superpower. The way to becoming a superpower is through the oil. And wouldn't you know it, son, right there in Jerusalem, yes, there is a wealth of minerals. There is a, in that little small place, and there is a wealth of oil, and all the nations are salivating over this place. Oh, my God, I could just shout right now. I want to tell you, even in you, God has put some stuff inside of you that the enemy wants. He wants to take it. He wants to strip you. But I decree in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against you will prosper because God's Got his arms all around you. Okay. Now let me, let me hurry on here because I'm running out of time. Um, so how does God respond to these threats? How does God respond to their coming in and taking the minerals, their desire to take the minerals, to crush the people, to plunder the land? And I'm summarizing here. What God is going to do, and you read this chapter on your own, he says, there's going to be an earthquake. I'm going to shake things up. <laughs> He's going to open up the ground. <laughs> and then imagine this. When all of these armies come out, God's going to confuse the enemy. Yeah, just like he did before. What, what was that with Jehoshaphat? When all those armies came again? Yeah. They're going to start fighting against each other. So, God's going to shake things up. Sword will be against sword. The same army. And then he's going to send sickness. It says that in there. He's going to send pestilence. How you going to fight sick? And then he's going to send a storm of all kind of stuff. Flood, hail, fire. What can you do with that? <laughs> Skip the earth is opened up. <laughs> you sick, you confused, fighting each other, and fire is coming out of heaven. The conclusion is, that's right, and they will know that I'm the Lord. All, all of that stuff about we've turned the lights out in heaven. <laughs> all of that stuff about we've dethroned God and we broke the back of the gospel. Are they going to think about that? Just as those soldiers cried out when Jesus said it's finished and the earth began to quake, they said, surely. <laughs> now, what does this mean for you? 
What, is, what does this mean for you? I got just a... You helping me preach this thing. Lord have mercy. That's a good word. She said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on a second. So whatever, you, whatever trial you're going through, get some clapping in your hand and some joy in your spirit because God is in control. Come on and bless his name in this place. Come on, bless his name. song came to my mind <laughs> and I just laughed. <laughs> First of all, I want you to know as it says in Psalms that God is laughing. You got that? God is laughing. He's, <clears throat> he's mocking them now. God's going to have a last laugh. Yeah. Hmm? Proverbs 1 and 26. Let's go there. Thank you. You know, we often see God as one with this serious expression. He never smiles. You need to know that he sings and he dances when he thinks of you. And when he hears folks like Joseph Stalin and Vladimir Putin, <laughs> <laughs> I can just see him on the throne right now laughing I will also I also will laugh at your calamity I will mock you when terror comes so I thought of this song that we used to sing oh Mary don't you weep don't moan Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. Just like God took care of them, he's going to take care of the enemy. Amen. So why are you fretting? Why are you, why are you worried about it? Let me tell you one more thing, one more thing, and then we're going to come to the altar. <clears throat> and you can just drop some of your cares. I was talking to somebody on the phone, and they were just so distraught, and just on the edge of an end. And the story of Elisha came to me, where he wanted to kill himself, and he thought he was the only one. And I thought about God whispering in the storm. I want you to know this. There is a whisper that's louder than your storm. There is a whisper. That's the voice of God. That's louder than your storm. Okay, and that's not the end of it. There is a promise that's bigger than your problem. There is a promise God promised you something before you entered your mother's womb he not only promised you something but he planned out something for you and it's bigger than your problem Everybody stand to your feet.